Joseph, amen, coming at you today, praise God, hallelujah, all right, praise God, well, glory to God, uh, I'm thankful for this precious day, amen, this is the day that the Lord has made, and how many of you know that <clears throat> in talking about that, this is the day, it wasn't the day that, that, uh, that we think of, in other words, it's not like today, Okay, so today is August the 9th, 2020, 9.02 in the morning. This not, it is the day that the Lord has made, but what, what the scripture is talking about here is that the day that they rejected the stone, all right, the day, the day that they rejected Jesus Christ, that was the day that the Lord had made. In other words, because now the pattern is in the earth, amen, the Son is in the earth, glory to God, and he can teach us of his ways, the ways of the Father, amen. But, hallelujah, I guess I'm pretty ramped up, I wasn't... Uh, I'm just, I'm thankful for this opportunity, amen, to bring forth this word of life, amen, to the body of Christ, amen, and uh, like I said, today is August the 9th, 2020, and it's 9.03 in the morning, amen, all right, so we'll just wait another minute or so, and then we'll get started with some prayer, amen, praise God, it's always important that your heart is prepared unto the Lord, amen, and uh and what that means is that, is that your heart needs to be soft and tender before this word gets sown in your hearts, amen. And so it's always important that your heart stays sensitive to the Lord. The scripture says in James 1.21, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, right? And, and the Bible also teaches us that we should be, <coughs> James 1.21, <laughs> guess I'm already teaching, amen. Wherefore, lay apart 
all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls, you see? So that engrafted word, amen, is uh, has to get into our lives with meekness, amen? The attitude of the heart has to be soft, in other words, amen? Because the scripture says, the entrance of that word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Well, where is he given? Where is that entrance? In other words, the entrance is in your heart. It's in your spirit, man. Glory to God. And when God breathes on his word out of your spirit, man, glory to God, the entrance of that word brings, the entrance of your word gives light, gives life, amen, gives love. You see? Because that is the very presence of Zoe of God. All right. So I need to, uh, let's just wait another minute and then we'll start praying. Uh, I, I didn't. Well, I'm just grateful for this precious day, amen. I'm thankful for the body of Christ today, amen, and those that are serving God and seeking to know the Father, amen. Amen. For that's the place that Jesus is leading us to, amen, the Father, amen, whereby we cry out the Father. All right. So praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thankful for this word of life, amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. From you. And through you and to you are all things, glory to God. That my heart will be soft and pliable, Lord God, that I would be sensitive to your spirit, amen. Amen. Sensitivity, awareness, and expectation, Father, of your life, amen. Of your life, your light, and your love, oh God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for your precious word. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Father, to stand in your presence, O oh God, ministering these words of life. Amen. To your people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful over your word, that you watch over your word to perform it in every one of our lives, Lord of God. And you're taking us from this promise, Lord God. You're taking us into the performance, Father God, through the preparation, Father God, that we might arrive at your power. In other words, your purpose. The purpose of God is the power of God, amen, to bring forth and deliver, Father, mankind, Father, from all <clears throat> the works of the enemy, the destruction of the enemy. And Lord God, in Jesus' name, as it is written, for for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, he might destroy the works of the devil. And that's our goal, Lord God, even as Jesus destroyed the works of the devil when he was on earth. That's our heart, O oh God. And I thank you, Lord God, once again for those that are partaking today, Lord oh God. I pray that the ground will be good ground, Father God, in their lives, as in their hearts, O oh God, as they hear this word, Father God, that as they hear your teaching, Lord God, that it would get sown on good ground, O oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for this precious opportunity, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> hallelujah. Well, I'm grateful, amen, for this opportunity to bring forth the words of life, amen, and uh, we're going to be getting in the word, amen, and uh, like I said, let me let me go ahead and post the outline because we will get started on that pretty quick, I, I, uh, I'm full, amen, and I have a lot to share today, and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity, amen. Well, you know what? I was uh, meditating this morning on a scripture in Psalms 23, right? Praise God. Psalms 23. Everybody should be familiar with this psalm. Psalms. Psalm 23. And it says here, it's a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. One thing about the shepherd is, is that his goal and his his role in the body of Christ is to <clears throat> maintain the order of the word, amen. And 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 another part of that side is that these 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 um you know this ministry of the bishop, right? The scripture talks about in First Peter two twenty three. Let me get to that. First <clears throat> Peter two twenty three. Twenty two twenty Three. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Second Peter. Is it? I guess I'll, I'll just go to the Lord again. Wait a minute, First Peter, two. Twenty-three and twenty-four should be it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Verse twenty-five, right? 
Let me read from verse 23. He, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself <clears throat> to him that judges righteously, glory to God, the righteous judge, amen, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. For we were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So the shepherd ministry, right, is that ministry of maintaining the body of Christ and, and, and backing up the word of God, maintaining the order of the word of God. And at times he's got a minister as a bishop, which means if your soul is out of order, bishop of your soul, the word bishop here. <clears throat> All right. Praise God. The word bishop, amen. Okay. Is the word here, uh, episcopos. Epi means over and upon, and scopos is where we get the word for scope. So what does the scope do, right? If you're a hunter, the scope is going to bring the subject in closer. It's going to magnify the subject. I take a lot of, I do a lot of photography, right? Well, it's the same thing that the lens, the, the, those telephoto lens brings the subject in close and tight. So you can see the subject and get the shot that you want, etc. Well, that's what Jesus Christ is to our lives. He's a shepherd and bishop of your souls. But we, what we have to understand is about the government of God here is that God is doing this through eldership ministry. Elders happen to be apostles, prophets, shepherds, shepherd teachers, shepherds, bishops. They have graces, they have gifts, they have talents, they have abilities and anointings, right? But the purpose is it's not for themselves, right? It's for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, in the elder ministry, elders are governors, government, right? And so as the government, they pilot the body of Christ, amen, at, by the order of Jesus Christ. In other words, he is the head of the church, Jesus. And there should be no other covering over our lives except Jesus Christ, amen, as a man in the earth. The scripture shows us this again, talking about the, the, the domestics here. First Corinthians 11, I don't even know why I'm going this way, but <laughs> I'm just going to run with it, amen. Uh, Paul in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ, right? Excuse me a minute. So be followers of me as I also am of Christ, right? All right. Be ye followers of me as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Now the ordinances has to do with the word, right? The word, the guides of the word, amen? The boundary of the word, in other words. The boundary of the word. So, again, <clears throat> remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I delivered them to you. But I would have you to know the head that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Now, who is the head of man? Jesus. Who is the head of Jesus? God the Father. Who is the head of the woman? The man. All right? Now, every man praying or prophesied with his head covered, another covering over his head other than Christ, he's dishonoring his head. So, in other words, that tells us right there, that man, the male, is direct. I'm sorry, is delegated authority, and Jesus is his only covering. In other words, Jesus is the covering of the man. Now, the, again, back to where I was at earlier, I mean, a while ago. So, this this eldership ministry, right, is the government of God, and and in the earth for the body of Christ. You see, and and the Bible teaches us to submit yourselves unto the elders. Well, that means you bring your life, you bring issues that you're having in your life, you need help with this, whatever, to the to the government, amen, to those that have been put in our lives to help govern our lives, and not to control us. Now, mind you, there's there is a there is certain avenues of this where that have come up throughout the years, right, in the in the history of, of the body of Christ, and that they were controlling everything, right. You know, what color of car you should buy, you know, I mean, what kind of refrigerator. I mean, that, that that's just a little bit too extreme there. A lot extreme, I'm sorry. But what I'm getting at is that understanding the shepherd and bishop of our souls, Jesus Christ, well, he also set up men in the earth in our lives, amen? And these men help govern our lives. Now, let's go back to <clears throat> Psalms, Psalm 23. All right. So, he maketh me to lie. So this the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, if we resist 
if we resist God's authority, God's government, you see, then God is going to also resist us. Because the scripture says God resists the proud, right? But if we humble ourselves, amen, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, there's nothing that you're going to come behind in as a son or daughter of God because you've submitted yourself to the government of God. All right? Now, the government of God, by order of first things, your, your, yourself is your spirit, man. And then in the body of Christ, I mean, as, my, as a wife over my, I mean, as a husband over my wife and father over my children, the domestics is the male. But again, he's got Jesus over him. And then in the body of Christ, Jesus is the head of the church. And then he's provided eldership to bring to bring shepherd and bishop ministry to our lives. In other words, he says, I shall not want. I'm not going to come behind in anything. I'm going to be, <clears throat> my path is going to be clear because I'm not resisting God. I'm humbling myself to the way of God, okay? So now, the next one is the one I was meditating a lot, and that is that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. You know, one of the things that when I'm photographing and the waters run nice and still, it's it's very, uh, very, it makes for very good photographs, right? But the thing is also is that when the water is still, that means nothing is is uh, is messing the water up. In other words, it's peaceful, and it and it calms you when you see that, right? And not only that, <clears throat> he makes you to lie down in green pastures. He's constantly, God is constantly leading us to that better place, amen, 30, 60, 100 fold fruit, the blade, the ear, the full corn, right, the revelation, transfiguration, manifestation, the good, the acceptable, the perfect, amen, and in doing so, <clears throat> those still waters, right, are, are, are constantly something that I'm searching for, right, I know when I'm, <clears throat> for example, when I've been working, amen, and I get home, and I'm really tired, right, and I just want calmness, right, I just want to, to relax, amen, I don't want to input, I don't want to filter anything, I don't want to receive anything that's going to uh, disrupt that, right, and it's, and yesterday, you know, when I was here at the house, and we did some, some things around the house, and hanging up some curtains and whatnot, and, and doing some things, my wife has been working on these projects, right, like, well, anyway, and it was very peaceful yesterday, real calm, man, just no pressure anywhere, glory to God. And not only that, he, he leads me beside the still waters. In other words, because you've come under the authority of Jesus Christ, the government of God, right, the Lord of your life, you also now have a peace. You experience peace, amen. Because of that government, that government takes dominion. It's the goal is to take dominion of the demonic realm, right, that are constantly harassing our lives. Well, the witness, in other words, what that's saying, when there is peace in our lives is that we maintain the ground that we have in the Lord. Right? You see, you take, you hold. You see the promises of God, the Word of God. You take it by force and you hold it. You maintain it. You maintain your life in the Lord. Amen. You maintain the Word that God has given you. You stay to the Word, right? <clears throat> so, that's what I was minister I mean, uh, thinking about today. And then, you know, John Jesus said <clears throat> in John, I think it's 14, 17. Twenty-seven. I'm sorry, fourteen twenty-seven. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world, not as the cosmos gives. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's interesting that the world and, and what they're pursuing in peace, and then the Babylonian system and what they think peace is, right? Is that um, none of that has to do with the government of God, because you cannot have peace. All right, which is mean, which means you're holding and you're maintaining the ground that God has brought you into, right? Through exercising the Word of God, to trusting and believing in the promises of God, etc., and moving on in faith toward God, right? You've maintained, you've gotten to a place, and now you're maintaining, right? And in that place, that's where you now have peace. And therefore, you got there because of somebody governing your life, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, by the Word and by the Spirit. So you can't have, you can't give peace if you don't have peace. And to have peace, you've got to be under government of God, the government of God. So he said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And it's interesting that passage, the end passage there, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said the same thing in John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
And in that place of believing, right, it means that we're trusting God. Amen. We're trusting and taking God at his word and we're maintaining the trust that we have in God's word because he abides faithful. So those are some uh, some things I was meditating on this morning and it just really blessed me, you know, minister, thinking about that and how how we struggle to try to find this peace, right, in the world, right? They struggle because they don't understand the way of God. They're not going to come into the way of God and understanding the purpose of God and so on and what God is trying to accomplish and do in the earth. And it's not to control us, glory to God, it's to, it's to get rid of this demonic world. For, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, the works of the works, the seeds that he's been dropping in our lives all this time, and as you grow and mature in the Lord and press on and press on and press on into this kingdom of God and you maintain that ground, well, now you've, you've defeated the works of the devil. And now you can help others in defeating the works of the devil in their lives. You see? It's the, diso turning, it's the wisdom of the just being ministered to the disobedient. Right? The purpose of God. Amen? To build a people prepared unto the Lord. Why? So that now God can bring it to bring his will in the earth through the body of Christ. And the will of God is something, I, again, I was, let me show you this right here. It's a little statement that, I, that, I, that I've been working on and building on. And uh, let me show this to you. This is in, uh, is this it? No. Hang on a second, please. Let's see here. I'm always uh, putting notes in, in my studies, right, when I'm studying the Word. and uh, Well, the statement is, is that the, the will of God. Let me see, how's it going? Now i got to find it. <laughs> I'm sorry, hold on. The will of God. All right. The will of God is the word of God. The will of God. The will the will of God is the word of God. I know that piece of it, but I added some other things to it, and that's what I'm trying to locate here. But the point is, is that God's will is his word. And the word of God is the word of God. And the word of God is going to lead you into the way of God. The way of God is very important because this way is Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> now, the way of God is going to bring you into the work of God. And the work of God is the word of God, Jesus said. This is the, if, you, if, if you hear my words, at least believe me for the works, you see. The works testify of the word, amen. So now, um, the point there is that there's a way of God, amen. And it's important that we follow that pattern. Now, today, you know, we're talking about the inspired word of God, amen, and what that means, amen, and why. Why it's so important and critical that we understand that this word of God, as the scripture says, he upholds his word above his name. Amen. We have to understand why it's so critical and important to maintain and follow the word of God in our lives. Because as soon as we bypass God's word and follow our own path, you're seeking to save your life at that point, your own soul. You're taking your soul upon yourself to manage your life the way you think it needs to be managed based on your philosophies and views. Some of it is God, some of it is not of God. Ridiculous, right? <clears throat> so that gets us now to a place where we're operating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is in the day that you eat of that tree, you're going to die. In other words, you don't have my presence directing you. But I want that breath of God, amen. <sighs> I want that inspiration of God, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that today, the inspiration of God and what that means and why he makes you alive in your spirit man glory to god and what the purpose of god is so uh again um we're going to talk about uh the inspired word right and what that means and so now if you follow me to first timothy three sixteen, and i'll post the outline so if y'all i can post it again glory to god praise god mm -hmm. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Now, 
the thing about the Word of God, right? Hebrews chapter. In Hebrews chapter uh, 4, <clears throat> let's go to that real quick. Amen. So, <clears throat> the inspiration of God, right? And, and, uh, and how it says that um, all scripture is given by inspiration, right, of God. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all scripture is, the, is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable. Now, if you look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2, right? For unto us, verse 1, let's start with verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise of being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So there's a place of God, right, that God wants us to come into, and that's the rest where we trust, totally trust Him, and have our reliance and trust and confidence in God. And we are being directed by the Word of God and the Spirit of God, right? <clears throat> but then he says, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. So unto us and unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Okay? Now go back to uh, 2 Timothy again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, profitable for reproof, profitable for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay, so the word preached unto them did not profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. So what am I trying to say is that you have to have faith in God, in the word of God, that this word of God is God, right? Because we see that in John 1, 1, that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, right? <clears throat> this word of God is God and we have to understand that this inspired word of God, amen was written by holy man of God <laughs> one time I was one time I was getting some copies made and uh, you know I just I just I just distribute right and I give that seed and if it falls on good ground, glory to God and uh, the young lady was was uh, helping me, and I was talking to her, and then finally she said, now, wait a minute. Where do you get your information? I said, well, from the Bible. And she goes, who wrote the Bible? I said, well, holy men of God, and they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And, and she goes, and what kind of men were they? I said, well, men of God. I didn't understand what she was trying to ask me, right? And then finally she said, no, they were written by the white man. I said, what? I said, what does that have to do with anything, man? Well, in her mind, right, she's in, operating in this upper spirit of division, right? And it's all about, you know, she happened to be a Muslim. <clears throat> and what's funny is, is that, uh, you know, she just went off on me. And, uh, and, and the thing is, is that so, so this word of God, this light, all right, the glorious gospel should be shined unto them, all right? That's the light of the glorious gospel should be shined unto them. Well, that light was shining, and it, and it caused that demonic activity in her life, that demon spirit that's operating with her, right, to rise up in anger, in wrath and malice, amen? Now, do we, do we think that, that that kind of attitude is from the Lord? And what's funny is, is in 1 Timothy 3.16, when you look at that, right, <clears throat> when you look at that and you look at the verses under, behind, it says, uh, I'm sorry, hold on, 2 Timothy 3, 16. I'm just trying to get to the verse here. All scripture <clears throat> is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Well, what's interesting about this seed that, first of all, <clears throat> as the scripture says in John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this fullness of the grace and truth that's in our lives because of our relationship to the Father, right, is very important that we understand uh, 
this life of God, this word, in other words, is alive. It's not a dead word, amen? And when these scriptures are coming forth in the lives of the people <clears throat> out there as we encounter humanity, some of that word is going to fall into that heart. And it's like I said, it's four types of ground, right? The, 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 the shallow ground, stony ground, the ground with weeds, and then the good ground. And so the point I'm trying to make is that <clears throat> is that what, when we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. But if we, I'm sorry, when we, let me see here. When we sow and reap. When we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. And I never know when that seed is going to come forth, right? It's not my place to know that. All I know is that I distribute the seed, amen, make that word known. Well, it caused that demonic activity to rise up in that young lady's life. And, and as a result of that, she was very upset. <laughs> so in, in Genesis 1-1, right, if we, if when you look at that passage, Genesis 1-1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? So the scripture says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, God, amen, through his word, created the heaven and earth. And then now, the thing about the word of God, right, it is alive, right? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, number one. Of the joints and marrow, number two, and the discerner, number three, of thoughts and intents of the heart, number four. That word of God is so alive and so powerful, man. It's always constantly making distinctions, right? And there's some that are going to come to the light. There's others that are going to reject the light. This individual rejected. You see? All right. Water there. Praise God. Now, so, Word of God is quick and powerful, amen. And we understand this Word of God is, is has the life of God on it, amen. It's not just a dead seed, right? And that seed, right, glory to God, if it germinates in the heart, glory to God, it's going to produce the kingdom of God, amen. Now, the Word of God is from above, and it has the power to transform into His likeness. In John 3, 30 through 36, listen to this. This is the word of God. Jesus is the word, right? Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so in John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory, as of the glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Only begotten, right, is monogene. Monogene, that Greek word means the only one of his kind, that seed. And that seed is in our hearts, amen, through the Word of God and through the Spirit of God. And that seed is bringing forth, constantly bringing forth that manifestation of Jesus in our lives, right? Now, um, let's see here. <clears throat> Verse 30, he must increase, I must increase. He, talking about Jesus, must increase. The Word must increase, but I, my soul, must decrease. He that comes from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. So there's one voice coming from above. There's other another voice that's coming from below. Right? So this voice, amen, this inspired voice of God, the voice of God, the word of God, is from above. And so the voice that's coming from the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. And he that cometh from heaven is above all. In other words, it's above all the other voices. Right? You have a choice, amen, which voice you're trying to hear. As Jesus said, take heed what you hear, amen. Take heed, pay attention to what you're listening to. For whatever measure and thought or study you give to that, what you're hearing is going to be that same measure that's being brought back to you. Now, the question is, is that where is the voice that you're hearing? Is it the voice from above or is it the voice from the earth or below? Right? The, the wisdom that ascendeth from below, the Bible teaches us in James chapter 3, 15. Where is the voice coming from, right? Is it coming from your from your inspiration of your spirit, man? Or is it coming from the knowledge of your soul? Right? Mental ascent. Well, that's what that's the question here. And what he has seen and heard, that's what he's going to testify to, and no man receives his testimony. What's well, the same thing today when you spend time with the Lord, amen? What you're seeing and what you're hearing by what the Lord is revealing, that's the thing that you're going to testify to. You're going to speak forth from, in other words. 
And he that receiveth his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. See, when you receive that word of Jesus Christ, amen, coming from the sons and daughters of God, you're setting to your seal. That's a done deal, in other words, that God is true. Amen. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him, right? In other words, he that believe um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> for one the for one God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God gives not the spirit by measure unto him. Amen. For the Father loves the Son and gives all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting Zoe, hath everlasting Zoe. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see Zoe, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The Zoe of God, the life of God, John 1, 4 says that in the big, I mean, in him was Zoe, and the Zoe was the fos of man. Well, that Zoe, that fos of God, that life of God is bringing light. Amen? So, he that believes on the Son has everlasting Zoe. Zoe is God's life, right? And that's what I'm saying here is that is that uh, <clears throat> that's what we want to experience, the life of God. Because that life of God, John 1, 4, is going to bring light, false. And that false brings comprehension, revelation, understanding. All coming forth out of your spirit, man, through this inspired word of God. Amen. Now, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, all right? It says, but we are with open face, Open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now that word change, 2 Corinthians 3.18, very important word because it shows us a process here. But we are with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's as if you're looking at, as you look, it's as if you're looking in a mirror, but you're looking at the word. And that word, because it's being inspired out of your spirit, man, you see, <clears throat> the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Ta changed here is the word metamorpho. All right, it's a Greek word, metamorphosis, is where we get the word metamorphosis. And it means to change into another form, to transform, to transfigure. All right, metamorphose, you see. And, and, the, and the point of that is, that is that we are being transformed, right? into the image of his son and that's what we're talking about here is that uh, are changed into the same image from glory to glory as you keep beholding the word of God that inspired word of God it keeps transforming metamorph metamorphosing transforming you meta metamorphosis into another form into another kind and that kind is Jesus because that's what's being reflected. Now they don't see you. They see Jesus in you, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory, you see. And that's what we want this inspiration of this word to bring us into is that they see Jesus in this world, in this age, in this time that we live in, right? All right, now. So we must behold, as we're looking into a mirror, behold Jesus. In other words, as you behold the word, you're beholding Christ. Change into that same image. Amen. Now another, one small example of this in Matthew 17, 2. I'll read from verse 1, start with verse 1. And after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brings them up into a high mountain apart. So he took the three, where he didn't take the twelve. He took the twelve, where he didn't take the seventy. He took the 70, where he didn't take the 120, and took the 120, where he didn't take the 5,000. <laughs> All right. So he took the three and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Raiment was white as the light. In other words, um, he was metamorpho metamorpho right there in their presence. Amen. And his raiment was white as the light. Now, in Mark 9, 2, as same occurrence here, and after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John and leads them into a high mountain apart, all right, by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, glory to God, metamorpho. And his raiment was became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no, so as no fuller on earth can white them. In other words, there's no amount of soap or bleach or anything that can make it as white 
as Jesus was at that moment. Amen. And that's what we're talking about here, this inspired word of God. Amen. Bringing us inspiration. Amen. Bringing us into the glory of the Lord as we behold this precious word. Now in, in, in uh, Hebrews 4.12, right? It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, <clears throat> one point I want to make there is, first of, first of all, this word, amen, is quick and powerful. It's not a dead word, amen. And all things are naked and open. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, this, in I was read something for, I mean, I didn't mean to read that yet. Hold on. So, in Matthew, I mean, Hebrews 4.12, even two, there's two words there, even two. And, 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 and the word two here is, it means through the idea of terminus. In other words, a final destination. So, God is getting us to a place by his word and by his spirit, by this living word, to that place where we can make a discernment of the soul and spirit, joints and marrow, discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what the word of God is, is doing in our lives. That's what God wants us to get to. Where these words are not our words, but his words. This work is not my work, but his work. This doctrine is not my doctrine, but his doctrine. Right? There's a lot of falsehoods out there. All right? Now, and so, and then if you look in... Um, <coughs> 4.13 Hebrews, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in the sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Now with here is the word pros here, which means to the advantage of. And then to do, to is uh, to or for with us or do, and then the logos. So the advantage of the, advantage of the logos, the advantage to the advantage of the Logos means that when you have the Word of God, you're, all things are naked and open. Right? You're seeing clearly soul, man, spirit, man. You're seeing joints and marrow. You're seeing, you're discerning, and you're having to understand the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see it all because of the Word. Right? So, again, take to the advantage of the Logos is to, in other words, how much Word you have in your life is how much you're going to be able to see after the spirit and the soul. Joints and marrow, thoughts and intents, and discern all this. You see, and and uh, now that's important because that's the place that trying God is getting us to. So, as it says in the scripture, Second Timothy two fifteen, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly making a distinction in all these areas. Amen. Rightly judging righteously. Glory to God. By your spirit and by the word. Amen. Always, always, always having in the forefront of your life the word of God and the spirit of God. And that's that's what you're seeing by. Amen. Praise God. And then in the message translation, that same passage, 2 Timothy 2, 15, it says, concentrate on what you're doing for God. I'm sorry. Concentrate on doing your best for God. Work you won't be ashamed of. Laying out the truth plain and simple. Amen. It's not complicated, amen, understanding this word of God. Praise God. And and what I'm saying about that is that <clears throat> it's not complicated, and, and it shouldn't be complicated. But again, you know, sometimes when it is complicated, well, it's a little bit, uh, uh, in other words, I'm just trying to say it's not a complicated thing, amen, and, and we shouldn't make it complicated. This is in the, uh, the Living Bible. It says, remind your people of these great facts and command them in the name of the Lord not to argue over unimportant things such as arguments. Such arguments are confusing and useless and even harmful. Work hard so God can say to you, well done. Be a good workman, one who does not need to be ashamed when God examines your work. Know what his word says and means. Amen. Praise God. Understand what God's word is saying and what it means, amen. Don't don't read more into it than you should, etc. Don't make it complicated, amen. Now John 663 in the Living Bible it says, Only the Holy Ghost gives eternal Zoe. Those born only once with physical birth will never receive this gift. But now I have told you how to get this true spiritual life. 
life in the spirit, amen, pneumatical, spiritual men of God, women of God, amen, and, and we get it because we follow after Jesus and we believe God's word, and we spend time with God. Now, in the King James, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, the words, the rhemas that I speak unto you, they are pneuma and they are zoe, glory to God, praise God. Now, he says here in Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, all right, that his life, the words of health, this is what, God's word is health, amen, it's medicine. You know the statement that God won't heal everybody? Well, yes, he will. And let me show you what I mean, right? There's a passage in the scriptures, right, where they let the man down through the roof. A man, I think he was sick of the palsy. And Jesus saw their faith. And then, he, and the, and then the Pharisees and the scribes and Sadducees are waiting around to see what he's going to do. And then he, uh, and then he, uh, he says, what, what's easier to say, be healed or be forgiven? In other words, it's the same thing. If you're healed, you're delivered and forgiven. If you're, he if you're, if you're forgiven, you're healed, right? So in other words, uh, it's the same thing. So if God won't heal everybody, well, will he save everybody? Will he bring them salvation? What, does he want every man to come to know the knowledge of the Lord Jesus? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And here's another thing about that is that <clears throat> God's word is eternal. Why would it change now if it's eternal? In other words, there's camps out there that believe that Jesus Christ will save everybody, wants to save everybody. But they don't necessarily believe that God still heals today. They don't believe in tongues. They don't believe speaking in tongues. They don't believe in baptism, the Holy Ghost, etc. You see? But yet they'll believe that Jesus was saved. And back then, right? They didn't believe Jesus to save everyone. Let me see here. What am I trying to say? So today we believe that he saves, but we won't believe that he'll heal everyone. Back then he healed the man, but we didn't they didn't believe that he would save the man, deliver the man or woman. And the point is, is that, again, we made it so conflicting and confusion. And, of course, who's the work? Who's the one behind the confusion, right? It's, it's the devil. It's the enemy. He's the one that wants to make the waters all murky, right? Keep us out of that still water and understanding this precious truth and these precious words of God. So the words of hell, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, it says, My son, attend unto my words, number one, incline your ear unto my sayings, number two, let them not depart from my eyes, your eyes, number three. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, number four. Your heart is your spirit and your soul. For they are life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. Glory to God. I, 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 I probably pray that scripture every day of my life, amen. For my family, amen. For myself. Because I believe God's word, amen. And, this, and, I, and therefore, because I believe it, I boldly say it. You see? And we can be bold about our trust and our faith and our expectation in the Lord, amen. There's no need to be intimidated, amen. In Psalm 107, 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Did he send the word? Well, yes, he did. And that word is Jesus Christ, amen, into our lives, amen. And he, he heals and continues to heal us. He heals and continues to heal us. And he delivers and continues to deliver us. Day after day after day after day. Amen. And deliver them from all their destructions. Now, in Matthew 8, 8, it says, speak the word only. The servant, he says, he sent his word. I'm sorry. He, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. The word of God is the power of God. Amen. The power to produce the life of God, the light of God, the love of God, the power of God. Amen. For people out there in the world, for the body of Christ in our in, in the, that we fellowship at, amen, for our brothers and sisters, for our wives and our sons and our daughters. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> Speak the word only, man. In Exodus 15, 26, <clears throat> excuse me. Exodus 15, 26, it says, and said, uh, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do all that which is right in his sight, and will give ear unto his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals thee. Now sometimes, 
And the parents are looking at it and saying, well, what do you mean, Father, that, that uh, you will put none of these diseases upon them? In other words, because you turned away from God, you see, and now you're going your own direction, you're going back into Egypt, man. You're going back to the Babylonian system that God delivered you out of. And because of that, you're entering into the same thing that they have in their lives, which is they don't have God. They don't have his word. No spirit. And so guess what? You're not covered anymore, amen? You're not protected anymore, etc. Right? You know, we know those passages that talk about <clears throat> uh, God and the prosperity of God, right? It says that no good thing. The Lord God is a son. The Lord God is a shield. No good thing will you withhold from those who walk uprightly. Right? We understand that. Well, what are some of the good things that we've experienced that we do experience as sons and daughters of God? Well, we experience divine healing. Amen. We we experience covering and protection for our for our homes and everything that, that we own. A hedge of protection, right? We experience the salvation of the blood of Jesus Christ. We experience deliverance and, and help anytime we need it. Glory to God. And God is faithful to honor that word. I mean, isn't that beautiful? That payment of contract, right? He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder. Amen. And I believe God. <clears throat> now, so that's 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 what's what the Lord showed me is that because you have turned away from God and back unto the world, then you're going to experience what the world's going through. Because see, He's a righteous Judge, Amen. And because of the blood of Jesus, we're covered. Praise God. Now, in Job thirty-two eight, <clears throat> the words of Revelation. It says that, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Amen. And so if you go back and look at the passage um, in, in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Well, God inspired it in the spirit, in their spirits, you see. <clears throat> and that's how he operates. Now look at this in the Amplified. But there is a vital force, a spirit of intelligence. In a man, and and the breath of the Almighty gives men understanding. Praise God. Understanding where you finally put it all together. Oh, I get it now. Boom. Praise God. Now look at this in the living, living Bible. But it is not mere age that makes man wise. Rather, it is a spirit in man. It is the spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty, that makes him intelligent. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Now, so the intelligence that we have, the the wisdom to be able to see and understand and comprehend quickly, amen. The word inspiration is the word neshama, and it means a puff that is a wind, angry or vital breath, divine inspiration. You see, intellect of animals, amen, men, women, etc. God's word, amen, bringing us inspiration, the divinely inspiring us, glory to God. And look what the Lord has done, amen. When we move by the Spirit, glory to God, it's such a beautiful, amen, beautiful, beautiful thing, amen. And look now what the Lord has done. Now, so now, <clears throat> so thy word, amen, in Psalm 119, 105, again in the living, your words are a flashlight to light the path ahead of me. And keep me from stumbling. Glory to God. I hate to stumble, man. I hate to be, you know, when I when there's a misstep in the in the I mean that one part of the sidewalk is low and the other part is high and you, you don't see it. Oh my God. You can really hurt yourself. Well I, I don't like to stumble, I don't like to run into things. <laughs> and because it hurts, right? <laughs> but as it says here, your words are a flashlight to light the path, amen. Ahead of me and keep me from stumbling. Well, if you turn <clears throat> away from the Lord, that's what you're going to be encountering in your life. But if you turn back to the Lord, this is what God will give you to light the path, the word. Now, 107, I mean, uh, King James, he says, same verse, Psalm 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> now, Psalm 119, 130, it says that understanding, discernment, comprehension, right? So look at look at that. The entrance and unfolding of your word give light. Their unfolding 
give understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the simple. Man, look at that. The entrance and unfolding of your words gives light. Amen. Their unfolding gives understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the simple. And again, back to Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divided asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So he gives discernment and comprehension to the simple. God's word is what's doing this in our lives. As we, as we seek God by the spirit of God, you see God, the Holy Ghost, revealing that word, always, always showing us Jesus, and Jesus always showing us the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Now, Jesus is the word, right? John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, right? So John 1, 4 says, in him was the Zoe, and the Zoe was the false, right? So Jesus, the word, in him Jesus was Zoe, in him, in the word was Zoe, and the Zoe was the false of man, right? In other words, the word of God is God. The word of God is Jesus, and that word of God has the life of God, and when the life of God is manifest, it brings forth the light. Amen. The comprehension, the revelation, and the understanding. Glory to God. Now, Jesus in John eleven twenty five, 25. <clears throat> Jesus said unto her, I am myself the resurrection and the Zoe. Amen. Whosoever believes in me, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on me. Although he may be, he may die, he shall live. Now, in the King James he said, he said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now, do we think, I mean, resurrection, right? You can't, you can't resurrect something that's alive. It has to be dead, right? In other words, <clears throat> resurrection is not just about somebody being raised from the dead like a dead body. Resurrection speaks of promotion, honor, favor, glory, you see, in our lives. Because God resists the proud, but gives resurrection, if you will, unto the humble. When you're humble, God can honor you and recognize you and raise you up. Why? Because you've been dead to yourself. Y'all see how beautiful that is? Amen. And he said, I am this resurrection. Glory to God. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. So if he says, I am the resurrection, Jesus is the word. The word is the resurrection. The word is the Zoe of God, the life of God. You see that? Praise God. And though you were dead, you're going to live because you have the word that's constantly giving and unfolding understanding and discernment and comprehension to the simple. The light, in other words, of that word. Praise God. And the Zoe. Again, <clears throat> not just eternally living, but eternally every day experiencing that Zoe of God, glory to God, and that resurrection power and life of Jesus Christ. Elevating your thoughts, giving you comprehension, insight, and wisdom to see things that you didn't see before. All because, as it says back in Job, but there is a vital force, a spirit of intelligence in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives men understanding, glory to God. Praise God. That resurrection and Zoe of God, amen, bringing us life constantly out of our spirit, man. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, glory to God. And that earthen vessel moves by the spirit and lives by the spirit. In him we live and move and have our being by the word and by the spirit. Glory to God. Now, Ephesians 1.17 same thing, I am the resurrection, I am the Zoe. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, in the knowledge of the word of God. You see that? And in 18, it says, The eyes of our understanding being enlightened, enlightened that we may know what is the hope of God, our Father's calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That last little passage, I always stumble at that a little because I try to comprehend that by the words that are being said. But when you read that in another translation, it makes it clear. In Ephesians 1.18, <clears throat> in the message, it says, Your eyes focused and clear. Again, the focus because of the word, the life of God, the resurrection of God. So that you can see exactly what he is calling you to do. 
grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for Christians. Amen? You grab and you understand what this life is and what he's bringing us into. Now, in uh, verse 18, in the message, right? Let me see here. And I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future he has called you to share. I want you to realize that God has been made rich because we who are Christ have been given to him. Isn't that beautiful? That God is rich because we've been given to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. And in the giving of him, now we come into our inheritance, the place that God has set aside for you. Amen. Back to Ephesians 1.18, the latter part, God has been made rich because we who are Christ have been given to him. You see? And in Matthew, I mean, John uh, 14, right? Jesus said that, that where you are, there, that where I am, there may you be also. He's preparing a place for us. That place that he's preparing us for is maturity. Sons of God, daughters of God. So now we can be given to the Father. And now because we have been given to the Father, God has been made rich. Now I'm not knocking the fact that you must be born again. That is the beginning process. That is the gateway into the kingdom. But as a son or daughter of God that's just an infant or, or keeps messing up, you can't put could put much reliability in that. Well, guess what? Neither can our father. If he can't rely on you and trust you, then what's the point? And so, therefore, as it says here, God has been made rich because we who are Christ have been given to God the Father. And as other scriptures teach about, whereby we cry, Abba Father. Now we cry, Abba Father, amen. And we cry for that will of God to be in the earth. Surely the Lord God will do nothing till he reveals his secrets unto his servants and prophets. In other words, the sons of God and the daughters of God that are mature in the Lord, those are the ones that he can bring his understanding and comprehension and revelation to. Those are the ones that bring an inspiration to understand what God is doing in the earth at this hour. Amen? The sons of Iskar that had understanding of the times. A young child or a young babe in the Lord, they don't understand all this except what they need still. They're not understanding what the perspective of God is and what he's trying to do in the earth and why he needs us to grow up, amen? Whew. Wow. The power of the inspired, inspired word. Job 32, 8. But there's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding, glory to God. In Psalms 18, 15, it says, Then the channels of waters were seen. And the foundations of the world were discovered as the as at that rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. You see, God's word is able to inspire and allow us to see. Even the foundations of the waters, the scripture says here, the foundations of the world were discovered, you see, because of the blast of the breath. God removed all the darkness back. And, and, okay, and I've read this to you before, but I'll share it again in Genesis Hearing and hearing by the word. <clears throat> and God said, let there be. The word let there be is the word hayah. So God, it says here too, that emphatic. So he said, hayah. Light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. So what did the light come to do? To divide, to, it divided the light from the darkness. So the light exposed the darkness. So in other words, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils, the foundations of the world were discovered. You see, he, he moved all the darkness back and got to the very core. And from there, started building again, glory to God. Raising up, praise God, something that would honor and glorify him. Same passage in 2 Samuel twenty two sixteen. 16. But look at this in Job 4, 9. By the blast of God, they perish. And by the breath of his nostrils, they are consumed. This blast, this breath of God, this inspiration of God, causes us to see in the spirit. And understand our Father. And God is bringing now back to the earth. Amen. Understanding that 
when we're moving God's spirit and his word, amen, because of the blast of the breath, we're going to bring the judgment of God into the earth and understanding what that way, what that is. The effect of righteousness is quiet and assurance forever, amen? But there's also an effect of sin that has destroyed mankind, right? For for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And God wants to bring them out from that unto Jesus Christ, amen? That's what we're doing, the work of God, amen? Reconciling, right? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God inspired him and brought animation brought life brought focus to the man and his spirit now that man could live for the lord and live for himself you see the inspiration of god has had caused him to see and comprehend and understand and became a living soul a soul that wasn't offensive unto god alive by the spirit of god by the nature of god by the divine nature of god now <clears throat> praise god so the scripture says in Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of, ma of the majesty on high. See, he purged all the sins, amen, and he made us now have a place with God. And now we can be whoo, inspired by the Lord whoo, every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, every time we come to him, every time we acknowledge his presence, amen, every time we hear from the Lord in our spirit, amen, every time God sends us in a certain direction, glory to God, we hear and we bring it bring, by the inspiration of God, and praise God, now we're walking in that place where God has for us through Jesus Christ, our inheritance, amen, sons of God and daughters of God growing up. Mm. So the word of God, amen, is a sore soul at the word, amen. This word of God has to be sown in the heart, amen. And he said unto them, So is the kingdom of God as, God, as a man should cast seed into the ground. Verse 26, Mark 4. And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow up, and he, he knows not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn. In your own heart, when the word is sown, it produces, amen. But we can't allow the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in and choke that word. Because when we do that, we're losing our focus. We need to get back on the narrow path, which is Jesus. Yeah. All right, praise God. Well, <clears throat> I'm just going to read the last sections here. The integrity of the inspired word. I mean, God will do what he says in his word he will do. Heaven and earth, Mark 13, 31, shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Eternal word. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. Neither the son of man that he should repent. For has he said, and shall he not do it? And has he spoken it, and shall he not make it good? Yes, he has, glory to God. The word is magnified above all. Psalm 138, verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name. For thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Glory to God. This word is so important. Amen. My covenant, Psalm 89, 34, will I not break nor alter the thing that it's gone forth out of my mouth. If, you're, if God's words are coming forth out of your mouth, glory to God, guess what? He's not going to allow that covenant to be broken. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that it's gone forth out of my mouth. Praise God. In other words, God's word is going to be fulfilled. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119.89. Forever, eternally, the word is settled. Deuteronomy 7, 9 and 12. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is the faithful God, which keeps covenant and shows mercy to those that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repayeth them that hate him to their face and destroys them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. He will repay him to his face. You see, those individuals that hate God are the ones that have turned from God. And guess what? Touch not mine anointed, neither do my prophets no harm. Do not speak out against the people of God. Do not speak out against anybody. Because when you do, you're operating in the spirit of slander. Which is the accuser of the brethren. You're moving in the same spirit as the devil. Whew. Now... <clears throat> 
Praise God. Deuteronomy 32, 4 in the Amplified. He is the rock. His work is perfect. All the ways and for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. In the Living Bible, it says that he is the rock. His work is perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is faithful without sin. Amplified, it says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are law and justice. A God of faithfulness without breach or deviation, just and right is he. Amen. And we've got to understand and believe that word and seek it every day of our lives, knowing that there we're serving a righteous God. Amen. A God of, of equity that's fair. Amen. Never, never, never alter his words. But always and never showing partiality, never being discriminatory. How about that? Never, never, never you're going to experience that from God. Should we be experiencing that from the people of God? No, sir. No, ma'am. Praise God. Father, I thank you for this precious time and this precious word. I thank you for your precious spirit, Lord God, that breathes on this word. I thank you for the good ground that this word has fallen on, glory to God. I thank you for those that have ears to hear and eyes to see what the spirit is saying to the church, glory to God. And I thank you, Lord God, for my many, many brothers and sisters that will hear this word today and in the future, Father, for this bread of life. In Jesus' name, we thank you for this time and this opportunity, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you.